This is Sylph Radio, a Pokemon-centered podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Kay, and every episode I sit down with a good friend of mine or a, you know, okay friend of mine, as the case may be. Uh, (laughs) So far, it's just been good friends of mine, but uh, (laughs) this is an adult podcast. We use bad words, and uh, sometimes we make jokes that are in poor taste, and it's not intended for young listeners, it's also not intended to imply ownership of the Pokemon franchise or intellectual property. Uh, we're just a bunch of Pokemon fans that have been sitting around talking about this shit since we were kids. Well, most of us are. My guest today, uh, as I've <laughs> introduced him the last two times, is a relative newcomer to the fan. But uh, if you're a if you're a listener to our podcasts, you're already very familiar with him. Uh, my good friend, my podcast partner, Mr. Craig Lewis. How's it ah, going, man? Ah, ah, no, no, you do too much. You can't do much. I almost had to interject on my behalf before when you're like, or, okay, friend. <laughs> hey. I'm like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. But you, uh, you redeem yourself a little later. You, it has to be stated, man. You are, you're a noob. You're a pokey noob. I am a poke noob. You're still a poke noob. I'm still a poke noob. I have seen most of the Pokemon anime, at least, <laughs> so I can say that I've... But the problem is, I'm punishing oh, myself and, as an adult. You and doing Sarah it watched of, through it. Recently, Netflix, man. You? Netflix okay. has been very helpful. Okay. What do you think of the anime having watched it now? I mean, I can see why kids love it. <laughs> it's <laughs> It has its fun moments. There are a lot of cute, cute Pokemon, but. Uh, I'm. I'm a little brutal on the anime, and it's, I, it it's doesn't, not great. I mean, it, but doesn't, it doesn't deserve all the vitriol. I think I give it. It's not that it does do when you really sit down and think. Okay, you know what? It does kind of do its job and introduce these concepts to like. If you didn't know anything about Pokemon, it does do its job and be like, "This is the world. This is what people do. This is what trading is. This is what gyms are. Right. This is what evolution is." And it, I guess it does a job of teaching you those. At least in the earlier episodes, and then it becomes. But the problem, rinse, repeat. you know, you just get like I was sitting there nitpicking. I'm like, oh my god, Ash, you're such a terrible trainer. You are just a terrible trainer. You can't argue that he's good or he knows what he's doing, even. And I think maybe that see, this is the new opinion I'm coming to, which maybe it's just because I'm getting older and more nostalgic, and I'm like, back in my day, it was better. But maybe that's <laughs> why I think the early episodes seem to hold up more with a lot of people. A lot of people are like, oh, the early episodes were good, but then it got stupid. And I was always like, no, it was always stupid. Take your fucking nostalgia goggles off. Right. Uh, but now as I'm looking at it, I'm starting to think, because I always had a, a little bit more of an appreciation for the early episodes, too. But I was just like, no, that's just because those were the ones you watched. And then you stopped watching. Um, exactly. Kind of like the people that say, Simpsons hasn't been good since season four. I stopped watching season eight. <laughs> now I'm starting to think maybe it was just that in the earlier episodes, it did a really good job of introducing the world. And it was okay that Ash wasn't a good trainer because he was still a he child and he was still learning. And he was... Red is a freak of nature, you need apparently. a character. You need a character, though, in storytelling for the person to relate to if that world is a world different from our own. Like that's why most science fiction stories have a Luke Skywalker or a whatever, you know what I mean? A character. Are you saying Luke Skywalker's like me? Are you saying I have many chlorians? Sure. I'm sure. But I'm saying that a character who doesn't know everything about this world and needs to be explained things so that you, the listener get explained it without just Frodo in the Lord of the Rings. You okay. know what I mean? He, he lived in the Shire. He was very sheltered and he needed to be introduced to these other the people other and cultures people of the are. world. And you know, like the, it, it helps to have the fool as it would be known 
Which is the uh, person everybody relates to. <laughs> yes. But really, I mean, in the We're tarot, the, fool. The, the standard story is based on the archetype, the fool's journey. If you know anything about writing and storytelling, look that up, the fool's journey, and you'll get a lesson on it. And you'll be like, oh, wow, you're right. That's Star Wars. That's the Matrix. That's, that's like everything. every movie I've ever seen. And uh, so in that respect, I think it was once it got to the point where it's like, dude, there's more episodes of Pokemon now than Dragon Ball Z. And, and still doesn't less know has happened. <laughs> and fuck, he, he begs somebody dude, for their badge. Five minutes till the planet explodes in Dragon Ball Z is like 19 episodes. Right. And fuck Pokemon. It's like he's still learning that friendship's a good thing and that you have to weaken a Pokemon before catching it. Like, well, fuck. No, I just, when he sat there and he was begging somebody for a badge, even though he lost, I was like, you're fucking pathetic. Pick yourself up and walk away. <laughs> Save some dignity, Ash. <laughs> like in the Cerulean episode where he – they they're at the start of the episode, they want to just give him the badge. And he's like, no, I have to earn it. And then at the end of the episode, he doesn't earn it. He doesn't it, earn it. And he accepts it. He's like, all right, fine. Well, I, at least I tried, I guess. <laughs> anyway, though, today we're going to look at some creepy shit. Or uh, pokey pastas. <laughs> uh, creepy pastas. Yeah, Pokemon, creepy pastas that creepy are pokey pastas. pastas. Yes, there's a few out there. There are a couple you told me were off limits because they might be. They've either already been discussed in a previous Silf Radio episode, or they will be their own feature Silf Radio episode. Yeah, those are probably the two biggest ones, which would be the no, lavender. No, 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 no. You let them. Okay, tell them the lavender town syndrome, uh, which is this whole creepy pasta about how the music. That you hear in Lavender Town in the original version of the game, which never hit the United States, made children kill themselves in Japan. And this is interesting because it almost seems to spring from the Porygon episode, which we discussed last time on Self Radio, uh, where a bunch of people actually did have seizures, many of them children, because children were mostly the ones watching the show. There was a little bit of difference, though, between like strobing lights that could cause seizures and is this music subliminally inserted with kill your family, no, but like kill in, yourself. In the future, you know, looking back at urban legends, if this is a persistent urban legend, like the, the guy with the claw. Uh, the hook for a hand, point. yeah. Yeah. Um, Not too many make-out points nowadays. Um, Most kids just use their any street corner. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Damn kids making out all it, over the park. You can look at that this story and be like, okay, well, clearly the origins of this story are this. This would be one of them, I think. You know what I mean? One of the influences right. to the story. But we talked about that in the Lavender Town episode, so you can go check that out. We're not going to discuss it this time. And the other one is arguably the biggest Pokemon creepypasta, and so I think... It deserves its own episode someday. Uh, it's known nowadays as like Pokemon Creepy Black version because uh, there's the a black an, cartridge. The game. Yes, there's an actual Pokemon Black version now, and I don't think there was when the yeah, Creepy Pasta started. Not. They're probably yeah, they're that diamond and like okay, they're not going back to colors. <laughs> but we're gonna look at some Creepy Pastas today, and if you're not aware of what a Creepy Pasta is, a Creepy Pasta, well, the term comes from the term Copy Pasta. Copy paste, which comes from copy paste, which was a story that wasn't true that got circulated around the internet, sort of like an urban legend of the internet, a copy pasted story, like maybe you got in a chain email or oh, a chain letter. Nowadays, something you'd see posted, terrible movie posted on Facebook or something. Terrible movie, chain letter. Oh god, terrible movie. I don't know the movie. I feel like I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bad horror movie that was kind of like. Bad. Well, it was just bad. It's one of those red box films. It wasn't kind films. of bad. It was just bad. There was just one really twisted um, death scene in it. Where... Do tell. Spoiler uh, alert for spoiler, a movie well, you it's don't like give a shit about. The opening scene kill. So okay. But like, there's just this girl chained up in a garage, right? And apparently, she's chained to the exhaust of her dad's car and her mom's car, and. They don't know where the kid is. Like, oh, she won't wake up, blah, blah, blah. We gotta. We all both have to go to work, blah, 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 blah. So they both get in their car, and she's like all duct taped. She's like, can't scream out for help. Apparently, they don't look uh, behind uh, them to see if there's giant chains attached to their car. Who knows? And they both turn opposite ways out of the house and what? rip her in fucking half. Oh, my God. 
And I was like, ooh, and it just started. And I was like, I should have just turned it off there. But like, great movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fucked up. No need to explain. Just don't watch the rest of it. <laughs> Jesus. Do you remember, um, fuck, what was the wrong turn? Do you remember yes. Wrong Turn 2, the opening scene? Some With Henry guy, Rollins? Some guy, yes. Yeah. Some, oh my God, that movie is so bad. It's totally watchable for a laugh. Like, it is hilariously bad. They just got you more hilariously bad. As you they mentioned went. Henry Rollins. There's a point where he does this, there's like a jingle noise, and he does this little like, look around, but it's totally like what a cat does when you jingle <laughs> a bell, and it's like... The most adorable thing, like if you just jingle a bell in front of your screen and Henry Rollins is doing the, <laughs> the cat reaction, you got to picture it in your head. But uh, in the opening scene of this movie, some girl's hitchhiking or something. I don't know. And uh, and this guy comes up with a machete and just like cuts her in half, clean cut, clean cut. from the top of her head to between her legs, just cuts her body in it's half. It's like some hatchet shit right falls there. Falls in half <laughs> perfectly. It's so bad. At least we're talking about horror still. But creepy pastas are, of course, a creepy version of a copy pasta, an internet urban legend. And a lot of them are lame. A lot of them are lame. lame. And a lot of them tend to have to do with video games nowadays. Like, it's almost becoming, even though, like. There's like Five Nights at Freddy's creepy pastas. Like, tons of them. Like, just let the game happen. Yeah, the game's just creepy enough. Just let the game be creepy. But I, it's because it's mostly like 13 year olds writing these, you know? And that's what they're doing. They're playing, they're playing the little, playing the little Five Nights at Freddy's. Like I got, got to do a little creepy pasta. Uh, this is the scariest thing I can come up with. Boo! Can I just say we're gonna poke fun at some of the stories we read, and I, I want to make sure we say this that like if you are a young person who maybe wrote one of these, like don't look. We make fun of every. We have, we've dedicated a podcast to Pokemon because I love Pokemon so much. You know, like. It, and we make fun of it every episode. Like our job right now is to poke fun at whatever. Oh, the, the kids the that story wrote is, these, so. I give them respect. Don't let us shitting all over it. <laughs> but I'm going to shit all over yeah, it. Don't let that <laughs> discourage you from continuing with writing. Especially like if I look at the shit I wrote when I was 13, it was cringeworthy. You grow. And like, yeah. You'll Keep grow. writing. Keep writing. And especially since like we might not even think your story's that shitty. We might just be Trying doing to make our jokes. jobs and making jokes. Making the podcast entertaining. So don't take this to heart. Uh, what you do is you write us a really mean email. Yes, a really mean <laughs> review on YouTube. Write like 50 of them on iTunes. I wrote on one of these like... fucking stories. I'm not going to tell you which one, though, because I don't want more people hating on me, maybe. <laughs> you wrote I one of these? I poured my heart into it. No, I'm being a little kid. Oh, okay. Writing us the email. Yeah, and share it on your Facebook wall and be like, check these guys out. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they totally suck. I'm like, hey. Bad publicity is still better than no publicity. So we're going to look at a few creepy pastas of the Pokemon variety, of the Pokemon persuasion. Read them to you and talk shit. <laughs> could, could our mission be any more simply put, more clearly cut out? Can I go first? Yeah. I want to let's go first with um, one of the biggest creepy pastas that isn't. The two that we said we weren't going to talk about. So the bronze medal creepypasta from Pokemon. The lost silver medal. No, not, not metal, just silver. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> Pokemon lost silver is what this one is usually called. So get your ears wet and enjoy. You see, I am a simple college student living alone <laughs> in an apartment. A simple college. I'm a simple college student. I ain't no big city chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. It's a college student. You got to give it a college student voice. See, bro, I'm a simple college student living alone in an apartment. All right, don't don't do a college <laughs> voice. Just read the story. I'm sorry. How about simple college student that's not a bra? Okay, cool. I was very enthusiastic about the release of Pokemon HeartGold Soul Silver here in the States. I had purposely locked myself out of all media and the internet aside for school purposes. That means no 4chan <laughs> every Friday night. You don't know how big this rule is to me right now. I needs the 4chan. <laughs> no slash V slash. No v. Bulbapedia. Etc. Etc. Et et Fuck, no Bulbapedia. You draw a line there. Right? How are you going to get through your previous you game? You that before Facebook. 
As I was busy with the school year and being poor at the time, I wasn't able to buy Soul Silver on its launch date. After my school I hear year, that, end, brother. <laughs> heart Gold, that's what I got. I don't know. I couldn't afford Soul Silver, so I had to buy Heart Gold. <laughs> After my school year ended, I ordered Soul Silver on Amazon. However, it would take a week for it wait, to arrive. You couldn't wait. wait. You couldn't afford Soul Silver when it came out, so you just waited for the year to end, and then you bought it on Amazon, paid a bunch of shipping and handling. Why do you not have a video game store? You don't in have your a town? local GameStop poking holes in your story already. You don't have a local crazy games. Oh, nobody has that anymore. That's ah, <clears throat> as I was saying. However, it would take a week for it to arrive. Totes long, right? I decided that during that time, I'd go back and replay Crystal version on my Game Boy Color. However, I realized that long ago, my mom threw it away. Totes forgot. You're totally killing the creepy mood right now, <laughs> Craig. I'm finding it very hard to be creeped out. It'll build, okay? With Pappy Let the tension Drew it build, reading okay? this fucking story to me. However, I realized that long ago, my mom threw it away because I told her the save went dead, and I was very upset about it then, and I'm still upset about it today. He doesn't, he just <laughs> says, my mom threw it away because I told her the save went dead, and I was very upset about it then, period. And I'm still upset about it to this day. Weird, weird, no, he doesn't say that, though. Like, yeah. weird sentence structure. I'm sorry, I'm trying to help him, I'm trying to fill in the gaps, I guess. She also threw away my silver version, so all I have is my Game Boy Color. No games. As such, I set out to GameStop. Oh, there is a GameStop. Why didn't she just buy it on there instead? I just buy it on there instead of Amazon. You can get it used, right? So I set out to GameStop and bought a used silver version, as it's the only Pokemon game left that they have for the GBC. All right, poking holes in your story right there. GameStop didn't sell fucking old school games or maybe they did when this was this could have been like 2010 who knows yeah. well it's obviously when soul silver came out the year after soul silver came out oh yeah okay so uh ten dollars for, for that game fairly cheap that's you know? really cheap nowadays it's probably more like 30 i went home and started it up for a nostalgia trip however that's where things start getting bizarre most likely the reason why you would read this this is where i get cereal the game freak logo started up as normal but it just froze there. I thought... Oh, creepy. His Game Boy game froze. That he bought for $10 at GameStop. And used. played eight years later. <laughs> yeah. I thought the cart was just errored or something. So I turned it on and off. The same thing happened. I tried pressing A and start over and over. I mean, i am got to get a new save file, right? Well, we all, that's what we all do when something freezes. We and try all pressing buttons, A and start or clicking. Any button. Just any kind of anything. Eventually, the logo vanished, and there was a black screen for about five seconds. Not six, not seven, not four, but five. Exactly five? That's fucking creepy. Suddenly, rather than going to the usual menu screen, I was already in the game in a previous save file, which was odd as I was expecting all of these cards to have been wiped by the poor battery. Either way, I wasn't complaining, as I would have chosen the continue option to see what the previous guy did anyways. At least, you know, just for shits and giggles, to, so I could say, like, ha, Man, what a fucking you asshole. Suck. You got six... <laughs> this asshole over here with his fucking... Fucking six bell sprouts, not even evolved. Level 48 bell sprouts. What a fucking chaw. Pokey noob. Pokey noob. Pokey noob. <laughs> hey, that's me. That's hurtful. All right. First off... I checked his trainer information. His name was just Ellipses. <laughs> Which is a dot, 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 dot for dot, the dot. literally uninitiated. Literally, I mean, like, as in, like, literature. Not, like, literally. Like, literally, they're lit literally. I don't mean, like, they're literally uninitiated. Literarily? Like, like, there's an initiation that they literally have to go through. Okay, anyway. Anyway. He didn't have much originality. <laughs> I don't know, he named his character Ellipses. I don't know how many people <laughs> do that. I mean, it's pretty original to me. I checked his profile, and apparently he had 999 hours and 99 minutes put into the game. What a fucking... It's so much time. He, no originality. He didn't have time to fucking make a name, okay? This guy was getting to business. With all 16 badges, 9... 99,999 and 90 cent... Poke dollars and all 251 Pokemon on the Pokedex. This kid was a king. 
Seeing as he apparently had Mew and Celebi logged also, I'm guessing he either used the Game Genie or was a really hardcore Pokemon player back then. So I choose the latter. Great fucking deduction detective skills. Fucking Batman over here. Greatest detective in the universe. Well, since he had every Pokemon, 999 hours, and everything you could ever want, plus the two legendaries that are hard to get, he was either really hardcore or he cheated. But... If he had used the game Genie, he would probably only have like two to three hours spent. In the Has game. he not uh, thought that maybe this guy was just the best person in the world and he was just a casual gamer and he's just yeah. so awesome that that's what trades casual gaming in. is to him? I yeah. trades it into GameStop. Don't even need that shit. I proved myself. I need other people to see it. That's what you do. So I says to myself, I says, I gotta see what this dude's got. What was this dude running with? Just read the story, Craig. That's not what he says, he says. He says, he says, I checked his Pokemon to see what a badass team he has. To my surprise, I saw five unknowns and a sixth Pokemon named Hurry. I'm thinking that this must be some cruel no. joke. By those, the are, those are the known unknowns. The five unknowns? You don't know how many unknowns he has in his PC. So those There's are the, so many those unknown, are the unknown unknowns. unknowns. Exactly. But then there's also the known un the unknown knowns. Okay, go on. I'm sorry. My brain hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a sixth Pokemon named Hurry. I'm thinking that this must be some cruel joke by the person who last played this game, but I decided uh, to check the profiles. How is, wait, what is... How is that a cruel joke? Wait, you see a Pokemon and they nicknamed it Hurry, and you're like, what a cruel joke. What is, <laughs> what is cruel about that? How is that a joke, and what is cruel about it? It's as if, like, the kid precognitively knew... <laughs> <laughs> that he was in a creepy pasta. <laughs> right? Well, this kid must have been feeling something, the cruel joke, that it was going to be a cruel joke because he knew it was going to get worse from there. But I decided to check the profiles of those Pokemons anyways. As expected, they were different letters of unknown. All level 5. I was a bit shaky with my unknown alphabet at the time, but I definitely <laughs> identified the word spelled out to be leave. <gasps> Who are you? <laughs> now, as for the sixth <laughs> Pokemon, it turned out to be a Cyndaquil. Mind you, this is before there were individualized Pokemon icons. The Cyndaquil looked normal, but it was level 5 with only 1 HP left, with only 2 attacks, Leer and Flash. You are never going to win. Get that thing out or teach it a fucking Ember. I don't know why they named him Hurry, but at the time, I just disregarded it. The most eerie thing was that Despite my volume being at max, none of the Pokemon had said their usual cries. Just pure silence. Whoa. I mean, it would catch you off guard, too, if you didn't hear... I'd be like, oh my god, there's something creepy going on. I better log this in my short-term memory for later. You get so used to that creepy noise that when it's not there, you're like, something's wrong. Right? The noise is creepier <laughs> than silence. <laughs> what, what animal sounds like Am that? Am I trying to get out of the internet? <laughs> Having enough of the team, I closed it. I've had enough of this. I just hear John Lovitz like, I've had enough of this. This is not a funny, cruel joke. What Turn kind it off. of a cruel joke is this? <laughs> I, I was parked at what appears to be a room inside Bellsprout Tower. However, for some reason, there were no NPCs around. Even more eerie was that the pillar in the middle didn't move at all, as if just leaning on its side. There was no music at all. And there was no exit or ladder. Or at least I thought there was. I walked around for a few minutes, but can't seem to find a way out. This was certainly not a room I've seen in Bellsprout Tower before. I tried checking my items for an escape rope, but the bag was completely empty. There wasn't any wild Pokemon either. Finally, I managed to find a ladder, which turned out to be behind the pillar. The screen turned black, and the music finally started playing. I had a sudden chill as I recognized that melody I heard to be the theme you hear when you listen to the radio at Alpha Ruins, where the unknown are at. I immediately this realized... This grammar is fucking atrocious. Jesus Christ. Yes, this Christ. is not me uh, speaking it this way now. This is me just doing word for word. I guess that's why you wanted me to do that, so we show how piss poor they are at it's, writing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so... I'm, I'm sorry. trying to flavor it up and help them out a little bit. And again, don't don't stop writing. Just take our advice and learn proper grammar. Yeah, Basically, better. actually pay attention to your teacher in English class. Keep like, putting shit out, but fucking get better, kid. Take some online courses or some shit. To pay attention to your teacher in English class. She's teaching you some very, some very basic things that will help you in your aspirations. This kid is in his second year of college, so... 
He's already out of English class by now. He's been through some trauma. Give him a break. Okay. I immediately realized that it wasn't loading transition, but rather I was in a dark room and would need flash. Before I took care of that, though, I immediately checked my pokey gear to change the radio to something a little more pleasant. But it turns out that there was no radio card or even a phone, nor time cards. There was only a map card in which gold, ellipses from earlier, and I will call him gold from now on. Okay, so he's the saying player, the player, the main player character who's, who's normally was called gold. Dot like, dot dot. Like the original is normally called red. Yeah. So right. uh, fuck that. We'll call him ellipses. I'll call him ellipses, King Ellipses. You know why he was calling him gold? Because he didn't know that dot 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 was called ellipses. Yeah. And he was like, I don't want to call him dot dot dot. His name is King Ellipses. He was just walking in midst of black. I recall that Cyniquil has Flash, so I turned off my Poke Gear and made Cyniquil use Flash. I didn't see any message saying Hurry has used Flash or anything like that. The room just became lit just like that, and I soon regretted it. The room was a chilling blood red with a linear gray path heading south. <laughs> then he this regretted it instantly. This would never have happened if you didn't have a Game Boy Color. Oh, why, would you re- why would you regret it? You're playing a video game. Oh my god, it's, it's blood red. This guy like... Pl- <laughs> This dude rents Devil May Cry, and the whole thing's a creepypasta to him. He's like, I turned on the game, and I was in hell! (laughs) There were just demons everywhere! What the hell was I playing? This is not a Christian game! (laughs) God damn, what did I just see? (laughs) I don't want to play! I don't want to play! Anyways, yeah, get over it. It's a fucking game, kid. You're in college. (laughs) <laughs> Might I remind you right now? This you should be like thinking this is cool as shit right now. <laughs> like, dude, check this out. Everybody, check this out. This isn't what it's supposed to be. <laughs> the ladder I used to go up or down was not there at all. I had no choice but to head south. The screen got darker every twenty steps I made until I finally made it to the end, which appears to be a sign. I read the sign, which said, "Turn back now." Another chill down the spine. He, that, I, he didn't write that, but it would have been better if it had given a little more, you know, so you guys can have the sound. Suddenly, I was asked to answer yes or no, but there's no question asked. I chose yes, as I do not know what it was asking. And <laughs> the, never do that. Never choose yes, because Absolutely you don't know what I someone's do. asking. Some random homeless guy on the street was asking me, so I didn't get what he was asking, so I just they went just along with yes. it. I said, yeah, sure. Before no. I know it, if he's you're peeing in my mouth. Always say no. It's like, yeah, that, that's a creepy pasta, okay. right? This kid is a college student. Okay, I chose yes as I do not know what it was asking, and the screen went black again, making a ladder climbed sound. The unknown radio music stopped, and in a few seconds was replaced with the not as creepy pokey flute radio music. Can I take a moment to say this is another one of those uh, moments where. If video games didn't exist, that would be a nonsensical statement. Like, you would never hear somebody say, like, dude, you just fucking killed me. Like, if video games never existed. Right, You'd right. never hear, like, fuck, I'm dead. If video games didn't exist. And that's another one. You'd never hear it made a ladder climbed sound. <laughs> <laughs> if video games hadn't existed, ladder climbed would not be a sound would not description. Be a sound. But both you and I and every listener knew Understand. exactly what that meant. We're all referencing Zelda in our minds or Pokemon. <laughs> all right, go on. I was in another dark room, but I held my breath and used Flash again. <laughs> held my breath because I got scared. Suddenly, it said that Hurry has fainted, which was odd since I recall that there was no status condition like poison on him. I mean, what's fucking killing him? This the curse? And I clearly wasn't in battle. I checked my Pokemon quickly, and suddenly, he's no longer in my party. In fact, after a bit of investigating, none of my Pokemon are there, but instead, all replaced with level 10 unknown. I did the same thing as before, and spelled out the unknown. My then team of unknown spelled, He died. Either way, after that creepy change, the room was lit to reveal myself in a very small room that appears to be only four squares big. The walls of that room were gray bricks, as if I was inside something that was hollowed out. Outside that room appears to be a bunch of graves similar to the ones in Pokemon Red or Blue. I've walked around that small room and pressed A, but nothing happened. I've already concluded that this was clearly a hacked game and some sadistic fuck sold it to GameStop. That sadistic bastard! He hacked a game and that sadistic monster! And sold it to GameStop, hoping that it would spread like a virus, like this was the movie The Ring. That sadistic bastard! 
Pokemon, what? the ring. There's nothing sadistic about it. I've never seen such a travesty of humanity. Such a desecration of this cruel, values. manipulative fuck. <laughs> However, my curiosity kept me going. I checked the trainer profiles of Ellipses. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I thought he said he was going to call him gold. I checked the trainer profile of King Ellipses again. I'm going to ignore the whole gold thing. <laughs> Maybe he decided not to because no, it'd be confusing. No, but he, he called him Ellipses. He said he was going to call him gold right. from now on. Maybe he decided not to. Maybe he like started to do that. He was like, no, nah, that's probably too confusing. Can't even trust him to be consistent. Oh, ouch. Ouch. So I'll start one more time. I checked the trainer profile of King Ellipses again, only to find out that the sprite of gold... Oh, this King Ellipses. Now he's calling them both in the same sentence. But the sprite of King Ellipses was missing his arms. He also seems to appear less smug, but rather seems more sad and empty in a way that I did not know how to describe. I mean, you are playing a Game Boy Color. Yeah, and Game Boy Color's fucking sprite animation. It was not a 3DS's sprite animation. It was a hyper-realistic squid word that was a joke <laughs> for you creepy Previous. pasta fans and, and fair point fair point listeners. Fairpoint podcast listeners. For some reason, it also now said that he has 24 badges, which was clearly impossible. Clearly. Clearly. After a few minutes of aimless wandering, my character what, suddenly... He says, he says wondering, though, of aimless wondering. So he was just like, bro, what if, like, what if? God... Dude, what if everything's from the world's perspective? But dude, what and if... And we're just players in a play, bro. What if... All the Pokemon unknown spelled stoned, What bro. if this is all being written by a 13-year-old? <laughs> and I'm not even in college, bro. Oh, shit. Stonerception. He just fell into that hole. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> After a few minutes of aimless wondering, my character suddenly spun and did the escape rope spinning animation instead of flying up through my character spun downward slowly as if sinking. After that screen, the music stopped. After finally landing, the overworld sprite of gold is colored differently now. Instead of the usual red color he dons, he appears completely white now, including his skin. It's as if he came straight from the colorless Game Boy games placed into a colored background of the Game Boy Color. I checked his profile, and now, while... <clears throat> yeah, he butchered the sentence. And now, while now is as white... As, as his, his overworld sprite. Right. Oh, that's he's rhyming now. He's just rapping. All right, pff, I checked his profile, and now, wow, now he's his white. It's his overworld sprite. <laughs> he lost his. He legs. lost his legs and has what appeared to be bloody tears from his eyes. It also says he now has thirty-two badges, like WTF. Hey, come on, now you're just now you're just getting ridiculous. I mean, twenty-four, I'll buy, but thirty-two, you're making this up. Yeah, come <laughs> on, man, you're making this up. Which now starts to disturb me, as this change of number seems to represent something important. Why? His age. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What? My age, because I'm a college student, and I'm a grown-up, and that's what age you are when you're it's in college. It's a metaphor for life lying before your eyes. Why does this number seem to represent something important? I also checked my Pokemon, which this time contains five unknowns and a level 100 Celebi? Without a nickname? <laughs> without a nickname? Well, who doesn't nickname the Celebes? That's creepy. That is creepy. The beast without a nickname. The man without a nickname. The unknown are this time level 15 and spelled out dying. I checked the Celebes profile. It was a shiny Celebi. Fake. Fake. <laughs> Except there's only half of the sprite. One leg, one arm, one eye. It only has one attack. Parish song. I love and I'm out here on the outside going, what gives? The people who like write these throw in these like meaningless details just to try to try to have that air of random glitchness to it. But now they were level 15, and they were level 2, but none of it has anything to do with anything. This like, game is stroking out over here. <laughs> Look, you're not you're not fucking Stanley Kubrick over here using numbers to symbolically represent the themes of your movie. Oh, I thought you were going to say using numbers to symbolically represent the slaughter of the native people. <laughs> the area I was in itself was a sprout tower with the immobile pillar as before. 
except everything is apparently red now. I walked north for what this guy felt can't, like forever. This guy's like juggling past tense, present tense, future tense. Before, now, after, later, maybe? <laughs> eventually. <laughs> eventually, after walking like forever, dude. <laughs> I finally encountered some generic men and women NPC. They were all lined up to the side, just facing the long slantish pillar in the middle. What is the slantish a word? <laughs> They were also white, and nothing happens when I try to speak to them. I kept on going north. <laughs> this is an allegory for the destruction of the native people. <laughs> the NPCs are just like, keep quiet and don't say a word. Maybe you'll just move along. He won't try to fight us. I kept on going north until eventually the pillar finally appeared chopped off with a transparent red in that spot. I went up to red, and without even pressing A, I was suddenly engaged and finally in a battle. What the Then fuck? I realized I just had some level 15 unknowns and a Celebi that only knew Parish Song. It's over in three rounds, I guess. I don't know. The music starts again, which it sounds like the unknown radio music again, but played backwards. What? Game Boy Color. I, I, and I was also watching yeah. The Wizard of Oz. I'm going to call bullshit. Game Boy Color doesn't have the ability to play sounds backwards. It doesn't have the processing capability. Its music is generated from, like, you know what I mean? 8-bit. Right, right, like right. 8-bit fucking music processors, like sequencers. It's like, oh, my God. This haunted cartridge has now haunted my Game Boy Color. King Ellipse's battle back sprite matches his front one with the bloody eyes, white skin, and lack of arms while red sprite was the same as before in GSC, except transparent. GSC the, is gold, silver, and crystal. Boom, there you go. The text simply said, wants to battle, exclamation point, as if he had no name, and both of us only have one Pokemon each, which is weird, as I swore I had six with the unknowns. I swear. You know? Swearing's bad for you, kid. My shiny Celebi came out. I'm adding this flavor and glistening like the sun. Shiny half of a Celebi. His shiny Celebi. Missing its left arm and right leg. My shiny Celebi came out. Yeah, and, and his family and his friends were very supportive, and they didn't make a big deal out of it. And everybody had a great time. Yeah. They had cake. And it, is, <laughs> what, like, it is what it is. You, didn't, what you, you don't have a responsibility to me to, to make that a thing. That's cool, man. I'm happy for you. And how life should be. <laughs> <laughs> so his shiny <laughs> Celebi came out, and it's like, dude, I know. <laughs> I know, you're shiny as fuck, dude. <laughs> My shiny Celebi came out, conveniently with a half a sprite for the back sprites also. The shiny noise and animation was different, as the sounds it made sounded like half a sprite. It sounded like multiple Wait. screech attacks used consecutively. Wait, the noise it made? Okay. Yeah. Red sun on a seemingly normal male Pikachu... Except he is level 255 and his sprite seems sad and has tears in his eyes. So what about this Pikachu is seemingly normal? <laughs> it sounds to me like nothing. You think he's sad because he's like, you pushed me past my limits. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's just one of those exclusive variation Pikachus. Like there's surfing Pikachu, flying Pikachu. Uh, Professor Pikachu. Blood crying Pikachu. Emo Chew. There is an Emo Chew. There's Rockstar Chew. <laughs> Rather than the usual fight item Pokemon run menu, I was only given the option to use the attacks. Since Celebi only has one, I chose it. Naturally, since Pikachu is level 255, he went first. Pikachu used Curse, lowering his speed and increasing his other stats. I'm not even sure a Pikachu could use Curse. I mean, I spent so much time on Bulbapedia, but I wasn't. A, I, I bowed off I, the internet, I, but I, I told you. I said I wasn't going to be on the internet, but like next three, four weeks. Couldn't look it up. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. He used curse. Pikachu is a cursor. <laughs> <laughs> Celebi used Parish Song. In three turns, both Pokemon get KO'd. Not like I have a choice. <laughs> look, this look, kid. All right, I don't need the passive aggression, okay, kid? I'm starting to get sick of this shit right? real quick. I've I'm, only fought one fight. I'm here to enjoy a creepypasta, not get talked down to, okay? <laughs> At this point... I didn't even go back to the fight menu as the battle just continued without me. <laughs> also, note that there were no animations at all for some reason. For some reason. This is like the most passive-aggressive creepypasta. <laughs> I, guess, I guess my Game Boy Color has the processing power to play sounds backwards, but it doesn't have the... It does, yeah, for some reason for it some can't reason. do battle animations. 
Also, for some reason, the game's just like continuing like I'm not even there. Whoa, I'm right here, guys. Whoa, I'm watching this. The like, yeah, like, we'll put another show for you. Oh, my God. Did you guys see Brian? He doesn't even know how to use grammar. And he's like, guys, I'm right here. You're <laughs> oh, carrying on oh, as if easy, I'm not in the room. Easy. Mama, maybe some gabagoots. <laughs> Pikachu used Flail, which didn't do much damage despite his level and boost as his health was maxed. Selby used Paris Song. Nothing happens as it was already used. <laughs> Pikachu used Frustration. Which did a shit ton of damage, yes. knocking Celebi down to less than 10 HP. It's okay, Pikachu. We're all with you in that boat. Celebi used Pain Split, which surprised me as Celebi didn't even have that attack in the first place. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Never mind. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now Celebi and Pikachu <laughs> have about 150 HP. Pikachu used Mean Look. Not like that did anything. <laughs> <laughs> fucking mean luck bullshit move anyways. I don't know how they have it. Really? Really? Pikachu's using mean luck? I think he's used like five different moves now. <laughs> First off. Secondly, save that for the zigzagoons. Mean luck. You're a Pikachu bleeding tears from its eyes of blood. Uh, yeah, you already, you're already using mean luck. <laughs> right? As expected, due to the effects of Parish Song, my Celebi fainted. Except in the text it said, Celebi has died? And instead of the ordinary drop off the screen animation, the Celebi's back sprite just vanished. For some reason, the Pikachu was still up, even with Parish Song, and it didn't count as my loss. Pikachu used one more different attack beyond the five attack limit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to four attack limit? Yeah. Five yeah. attack limit? Yeah, what? Just creating shit now. <laughs> Pikachu used Destiny Bond, which is red. That's a really dumb decision. Just saying. <laughs> Afterwards, it said, Pikachu has died with a slow fade out animation. Apparently, I was the winner as a transparent red sprite showed up and said, Ellipses, 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 King ellipses. It didn't say king. I think it was just saying I keep saying king. Oh, the thing was just saying. I don't think it was saying. It was an address. And then the player character was like, yes. And he was like, And he was like, yes. And he was like, my Pikachu died, so I died. I'm just trying to say silence. It's just ellipses, and ellipses is like, what? It's almost like who's on first, but Red's not saying anything, and ellipses thinks he's saying his name. <laughs> At that point, I just freaked out. <laughs> As the transparent Red Sprite was suddenly beheaded. Like it was <laughs> ISIS or some shit, leaving nothing but his transparent <laughs> body. The battle then ended at that point and fading out along with the music. I'm back in the overworld with another change to King Ellipses' sprite. He's now as transparent as Red's overworld sprite. I quickly checked King Ellipses' profile, where this time the only thing remains of him of his head. Where this time the only thing remains of him is his head. Fuck, transparent sentence structure, skin. dude. Yes, Jesus Christ. Christ. I, you're killing me while I'm trying to read this. Like, it's not fun. <laughs> the head was zoomed in a bit, showing a black void in his eyes. It now stated that he now has 40 badges. It now stated that he now has 40 badges. Okay. Pick one way to use that. Fuck. Not, not, don't use both. I'm not sure where I should place the now, so I'll just put both spots. <laughs> Choose one, bro. <laughs> I then backed out and checked my Pokemon. They were all at level 20, shiny unknown, which was spelled out, read, I'm sorry, I killed this one. They were all level 20, shiny unknown, which when spelled out, read, no more. I was at what I not, <laughs> you're killing me, boy. I was at what I now know is he next to the end. I was at what I now know is next to the end. Good. Anyone just tuning Good. in thinks you're reading spoken word poetry. I was at what I now no, know no. is the end. The end. Next I to was the at end. what I now know is the end. I was at what I now know is the end. That was too early. There was apparently no music playing, but apparently. for some reason, I still felt like something was there that could be heard. <laughs> There was no noise, but maybe there was noise. <laughs> I was back in my room in New Bark Town. Maybe, finally, I get to play this game properly. But who am I kidding? <laughs> I knew that sadistic fuck 
must have done something. But who am I kidding? Can I just like so passive aggressive? <laughs> He's like this fucking creepy pasta over here, not let me have my peace and just play my fucking game. Just trying to play crystal over here. Used crystal. Used crystal. Anybody used crystal? Can I get a real used crystal? There's ten bucks I'll never see again. Right. <clears throat> I knew that that sadistic fuck. I knew fuck. that sadistic fuck must have done something. <laughs> I walked around my room to interact with things as I'm a bit afraid to go down the stairs to see what was awaiting down there. Know what I said? Walked. As while the background was moving, King Ellipses was not moving his transparent limbs at all while doing so. Just floating like those ghosts you see in Diamond Pearl. So then why did you say walked? He right? was like, he's like, note, I said... Walked, walked in quotations not what as he while really the did. background was moving. So why am I noting that you said walked because he didn't fucking walk? As expected, the radio, computer, and TV did not work. There was a power outage. So I had no choice but to go down the stairs. <laughs> as if he would have been entertained playing this game, just having his character watch TV, <laughs> just pressing the TV A be next normal. to the TV over and over Just again. let the TV be normal. I know they only show news and the new world and Damn, I have Pokemon no choice Rhino but to play riding. this game. Oh, shit. I ended up at the same lower level room in my house. Everything appears normal, except Mom isn't home. After failing to interact with anything in this room, I decided to go outside. To my surprise... That door leading outside of the south didn't work, and instead I just walked straight through it to a void. I continue moving south to see what the fuck was going on. My house vanishes as I head south into the void. It was creepy as when I entered the void. The outline on King Ellipses' transparent sprite turned white to contrast with the pitch black. Eventually, I reached a white area, and King Ellipses' sprite turned black and transparent. Again, I continued south without thinking of stopping at all. I just wanted to just, just get through it. Just get through it, man. Keep going. Just keep going. After a long trek south, I finally encountered something. It was King Ellipse's regular sprite. I talked to it. He said, goodbye forever. <clears throat> I just want to point out now, he's, still, he's now still just using gold as the name, but He's like no. switching back and forth between just writing gold out in lowercase and then capsing the no, whole thing. Here's name. my favorite part, okay? He said goodbye forever, ellipses. And then in parentheses, this guy says, notably with a space in between the forever and the ellipses. The ellipses. Oh, goodbye, hold King on. Ellipses. You're getting on somebody for their shitty grammar? That, the space between forever and the ellipses is the least offensive grammar no, no, error no, no. in this fucking creepypasta, kid. I think you missed the point of what this kid's saying. He was saying goodbye forever to gold. Oh, saying instead goodbye of forever, just saying gold. goodbye forever. King ellipses, instead of just saying goodbye forever. He was saying or, goodbye forever, King ellipses. Okay. Okay. And then he vanished. And then he vanished. As that happened, it said... Question mark, question mark, question mark, WTF mofo used nightmare, which at that point, I would not deny that being possible. King Ellipses did another escape rope animation, spinning slowly downwards like before. I'm now back into that small hollowed out room surrounded by graves earlier, or at least I say I was back there, as there's no sprite anymore. I tried to walk around, but nothing moved, not even wall bumping noise. <laughs> Uh, boom, 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 boom. Again, boom, another boom. thing that if video games didn't exist, all of us would be like wall bumping wall noise. Bumping noise. <laughs> but because video games exist, we know exactly what you... Oh, yeah, wall bumping noise. Okay. I checked my trainer profile. <laughs> was absolutely no King Ellipses sprite left. It said I have zero badges. And all the pictures of the Johto gym leaders at the bottom were replaced with skulls. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You can't just take away 40 badges, all right? <laughs> He has to do something to lose them. Like, maybe get them stolen by Team Rocket or something. <laughs> okay. I, this is just bad storytelling. I, I checked my Pokemon, which were all level 25 unknown. As expected, it spelled out a phrase that I dared not to read. No, that he dared to read. Oh, that he did dare to read. <laughs> I'm dead. As soon as that... <laughs> if, if I'm just, like, bad grammar kid, I'm dead. Is what it really spelled out. I'm dead. I'm dead. Well, there's no apostrophe unknown, so. <laughs> Fair enough. 
As soon as I went back to the overworld, the room I supposedly was in was then covered with the same blocks as the walls. I then figured out what exactly that room was when the final text was said. (laughs) R.I.P. King Ellipses. That room was a big grave surrounded by other graves. King Ellipses had already been dead. He died presumably a few years after he defeated Red. He was a younger trainer who, despite his efforts at collecting so many badges and attempts at becoming a Pokemon master, was still unable to avoid the inevitable fate of death <laughs> and the inevitable fate of only owning unknowns. He didn't say that. <laughs> didn't say that. <laughs> and his efforts were eventually forgotten by the next generation. <laughs> I was unable to escape from that text no matter what I pressed. I tried resetting the game, and the same thing happened, at which I then finally decided to give up on that horrible nightmare. <laughs> okay, just saying, though, just saying, is that not just like a metaphor for how you treat each incarnation of Pokemon? The new one comes out, you're like, he's dead, he's forgotten in the new generation. <laughs> After that experience, I will never look at this quote-unquote gimmick unknown the same way again. They say that only the first generation have folk tales and legends. Who says that? (laughs) The original creepypastas. (laughs) But the second generation have shown me how unpleasant the truth can be. I eventually enjoyed Soul Silver immensely, but I still can't (laughs) unthink what that rigged game has told me. Rigged? 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 (laughs) but I still can't unthink what that rigged game hacked by some sadistic some fuck sadistic has fuck. told me. He, he had to throw that in, though, as he was nearing the end. He's like, well, I don't want people to think I'm bad-mouthing the game. It's, it's a good game. I don't want to give it bad press. Right, right. So I, I enjoyed Soul you know, Silver immensely. It, <laughs> but hack Silver's? Fuck that. Stay away. Stay away. Do-do-do. Do-do-do. All right. This next one's another one of the popular ones. Prevention of evolution. This one, there's a lot of fan art that you, you can find. You can't do even. that. You just can't even do that. Yeah, you can. No, you can't. You can't prevent evolution, bro. Like, what do you think Charles Darwin worked oh, so like hard in for? World. In the real world. Yeah, you can't prevent evolution in the real world. In but the it, RL over here. In the Pokemon world, you just have to press a button. You oh just my have God. to not give Pokemon that certain stone. The religious right would love that. They'd be like, dude, we'll just prevent evolution, and then that'll make our denial true. Um, anyway, you know the government created the gay virus, right? <laughs> so we gotta pray the gay away. Oh man, because that's worked with the AIDS virus. I think I also created by the government. <laughs> Fucking reptilians! Snap, 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 snap! All right, prevention of evolution. I'll never look at shiny Eevee in the same way again. Ever! Oh, no. That no. was in all caps. He was really mad. He was like, fucking ever! Because it Ellipses. didn't evolve when I tried to get it to evolve. It started only a few days ago. I was on the internet looking for action replay codes. I really wanted one for either a shiny Vulpix or a shiny Eevee. Then I found one for that shiny Eevee I wanted so much. Not the Vulpix, though? The code was, right? You just didn't Google hard enough if you couldn't find one for a Vulpix. The code was long, but I was willing to take the time to put it in. <laughs> it was over 9,000 <laughs> zeros and ones. How fucking long was this code? It took about 15 minutes to put the code in. I thought you were going to say 15 years to put the code in. <laughs> but I was so excited to get the code into action. I started my Soul Silver game up with the code on. I clicked on continue, and my previous save data came up. I was Sweet, already a better start than the last time. <laughs> I was saved right in front of the Pokemon Center. I rushed into the place with my Typhlosion following behind me. I went to the PC and pressed A. So now we're getting in to check out our, uh, our inventory here. I also love that too, like video game colloquialisms and syntax. Like he doesn't have to, even if you haven't played Pokemon in years or if you're only a fan of the show and you don't really play the games or you play the card game, you know what pressing A means. It's the confirmatory action. You know what I mean? It's interact. Right. It's talk to. It's access. It's pressing A is like, I can't even describe what it is. It's like clicking. It's like Unless right click. Unless you're one of those random back ass words games that 
that he says B is what does the interaction and A backs out. Which is why those games are so bass backwards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Klaus booted up the PC. Apparently this guy named Klaus. Oh, Sha. Should have been mine game to play. I clicked A on Bill's PC. Pokemon storage system activated. Bill's I... PC is Klaus's PC. <laughs> no, Klaus's PC is for items. Bill's PC is for Pokemon. Oh, sure. You're just doing Casper Hauser. Oh, I am, aren't I? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Klaus and... I'm sorry to the people that aren't Fairpoint listeners. These are Fairpoint characters. No, it's my PC. That's that's Casper Hauser. And what's Klaus? Klaus isn't that whiny. Gun hot, I love you. I pressed the L and R buttons and moved to box five, where a shiny Eevee was supposed to come up. I moved the cursor over the Eevee. It was named EE, basically Eevee, but the E, I mean the V is replaced with a lowercase E and the rest of the E's are capital. Eevee, Eevee. EE, I guess is how we'll pronounce it. EE. Its name was EE and it was level one. Its moves were Tackle, Growl, Sand Attack, and Swift. Sounds right. Sounds standard. Yeah, sounds like an Eevee. I took out my level 1 Giratina from my party and put it into the first box of the PC. Afterwards, I put EE into my party. I wanted I wanted trade it onto my Heart Gold version since it was the one I always play. I got Half my ass spell check over here. Uh, I got my other DS and popped Heart Gold into it. I turned it on and clicked continue. Once both of my players were in the union room, I started the trade. Okay, we get it. This is how trading works. Right? I traded a Cubone onto my Soul Silver in return for EE. E. Once the Pokemon were traded into the separate versions, I made both players leave the union room and saved. Yes, this is how trading yep, yep, works. Trading. Yep. One at a time. As if, like, people that don't know how trading works will be reading Pokemon Creepy Boxes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Once turning off the system Soul Silver was in, I went to playing Heart Gold. I wanted to clone EE e. so I could get the rest of the evolutions. I wonder if I have a Thunderstone, I wondered to myself. <laughs> Loudly. Oh my god. You don't want to... I wonder. Just like a writing tip, you don't use wonder twice in such... Pri- I wonder if I have a Thunderstone, I wondered to myself. We know you're wondering oh, yeah. it. Nathan Cap is over here, pro tip. <laughs> As I opened my character's bag... Oh my god, but he's right. He's but right. really, it's like saying I opened my character's bag as I opened my character's bag. We know you were wondering. You just said... All right. The only evolution stone I had was a water stone. Vaporeon will do for now, I guess. For now until I get a new EE. I clicked A on the water stone and clicked on EE. I watched as the EE evolved into a pink Vaporeon. Because it's shiny. Um, once the evolution process was done, I saved the game and turned it off as it was time for me to go to bed. Okay, I have a question. Was this Eevee not at level one? Do you really want to raise a Vaporeon from level one? Yeah, totally. Yeah? I mean, doesn't it's like first moves start off at like level 30? But you, you gain more. No, they might learn moves earlier and you gain more experience in the evolved form. Okay. And more like stat boosts in the evolved form. I usually, um, the way I do it, I know I'm a poke noob here, but uh, the way I do it is I normally like level them up until they've learned the moves I want them to learn, and I then think, I'll evolve I think them. there's certain Pokemon that, yeah, if you wait on evolving them, you can learn moves faster. Not and just learn it, moves faster, but like, you know, there's certain moves you can learn as the pre-evolved state that you can't learn as the evolved state. For some Pokemon. For most of Not them. Not for Eevee. For a lot standard, of them, it, it normal benefits Pokemon to here. evolve. For a lot of them, though, it benefits to evolve them earlier. So it was time for him to go to bed. Uh, several days had passed. I had gotten all the shiny evolutions except for Flareon, but that didn't matter to me. I'd get it later. I guessed it later. So how did he end up getting all the shiny Eevees in just several days? Like, he was just, like, tr- wonder trading like crazy and getting, like, shiny Eevees he constantly? Just, he, he cloned the Pokemon. It's like a something oh. you can do... Where you're trading and then you turn a system off or something. I think he was saying he cloned it. And and cloned the shiny. Because if you had like a shiny and maybe like made it with dittos, it wouldn't necessarily pr- produce no, another shiny no, Eevee, exactly. right? But what he's saying is it was something where... I, I, he didn't mention, I don't think, doing it. Because I think it has to do with like turning off the systems while it's trading or something. And like that way... Who would ever think to do that? It'll still be on the previous version and You know what I would version. think? If I was to turn off the system while I'm trading, trade's fucked. He got his DS. 
I got my DS and popped in my action replay DSi along with my Soul Silver. Once the code list loaded, I clicked on the shiny Eevee code and started up the game. I clicked continue as soon as the options come up. I was saved in the Pokemon Center this time. I ran over to the PC. Nope, you can't run in a Pokemon Center. Right. Oh, you right. couldn't Soul Silver, couldn't you? Maybe. That was maybe the first generation that let oh, you run inside. Oh, because you're able to keep the fast shoes or whatever. The running shoes. Yeah. But I think they didn't let you run inside up until that generation. Um, Klaus, they even let you ride bikes inside. They never let you do that. Oh, and like the newer one, I swear to God, it did. It's riding a bike up in the bike shop. Yeah. No, but I love that um, when you try to ride your bike, you have a flashback. It says that the professor says to you, Red or Klaus. There's a time and a place for everything, but not now. So it, And obviously, he's not just calling you up and saying, hey, don't ride the bike inside. So right. it's you flashing back to something, which means there was some time where you tried to do something. <laughs> that you couldn't do. And the professor was like, hey, asshole, there's a time and a place for everything, but not now. And you regularly flash back to that, which I love. I love that unstated part of the Pokemon mythos. Right? Can you imagine so, that in the anime? So Klaus booted up the PC. I clicked A on Bill's PC. Pokemon storage system activated. I was already in box 5. I moved to box 6 and held down the R and L buttons. I moved back to box 5. Instead of an Eevee icon in the box, there was an egg icon. I moved my cursor onto it. It was a bad egg. I moved the egg. <laughs> really bad eggs. <laughs> he was on the punk scene. Wait, do you get bad eggs in Pokemon? I don't think I didn't so. think you did. I think what he means is like this this dude is bred sociopath. I moved the egg to the side of the box and tried it again. Another bad egg. He cracked it open and blood spilled out. What is he talking about? I moved this egg to the bottom and tried for a third time. This time, EE -E appeared in the box. I moved EE -E back into my party. I wanted to train him. I disregarded the fact that I had two bad eggs in my PC box and logged off the PC. I ran out of the Pokemon Center to train EE. -E. I had the max XP code on, so this would be easy. Or, as we call it, EE. -E. Yeah. <laughs> after, uh. after, flying the, after flying to Goldenrod City on my Ho-Oh, or as we call it, Oho, <laughs> I ran out of the city knowing that uh -oh. I had sneaked past some of the trainers. I ran out of the city knowing that I had sneaked past some of the trainers. Once a trainer <laughs> had spotted me, I send out EE. -E. The opposing trainer sent out a level 10 Diglett. I return EE -E and send out my trusty Typhlosion. After the foe's Diglett attacked, I selected Typhlosion's command. Yeah, Typhlosion. Yeah, kick ass, number one. This wouldn't be hard at all for him since he was level 100. I selected Slash. Typhlosion used Slash. Foe Diglett fainted. I held down the R button so EE -E would gain max experience points. Did that work? I, Is maybe, that a real maybe thing? it's an action replay thing. Or maybe this kid's just an idiot and he believes shitty reads on the internet. I don't know. If you hold down the B button while trying to catch a Pokemon, you have a better chance of catching it. People used to say yeah, that. That's, People used to that's think bullshit. that. EE -E grew to level 2. EE -E grew to level 3. This went on until EE -E grew to level 37. Trainer is about to send out Zubat. Will Klaus change Pokemon? I selected yes and sent out EE. -E. Go, EE. -E. Trainer sent out Zubat. I selected the fight command, then chose Swift. EE -E used Swift. Haters gonna hate! Foe Zubat died. Their Zubat died, I questioned. Why are they all foes? Like, F A U X? No, Zubat? F O E. Oh, okay. Foe, your opponent. I would, for some reason, I was like, fake Zubat? Foe Zubat. <laughs> Their Zubat died, I questioned. I shook my head and ignored it. Although, through my confusion, I had forgotten to hold down the R button to get the max EP, the max XP for my Eevee. Trainer is about to send out Diglett. Will Klaus switch Pokemon? I selected no this time. Trainer sent out Diglett. What will EE -E do? I selected the fight option, then chose Swift again. EE -E used Swift. Foe's Diglett died. Again, the Pokemon had died. Even though this still confused me, I remembered to hold down the R button. Unfortunately, since I was confused, I hurt myself in my confusion. Oh, no. Okay, I added that part. Oh, that would have ah, been great. He was cutting his wrist. That would have been great. I'm hurting myself in my confusion. EE <laughs> e. grew to level 38. EE e. grew to level 39. Sweet. EE e. grew to level 40. 
This continued until EE reached level 52. The opposing trainer didn't do anything after I beat him. Before the screen went back to the overworld, I got the evolution screen and EE was on there. What? EE is evolving! The animation started showing it was trying to evolve into Espeon. I clicked the B button since I already had a shiny what? Espeon. No, why not? Oh, okay. What? EE stopped evolving. I noticed that EE seemed to be angry. How did you notice this? <laughs> He gave me this look like, motherfucker, I won't be espion. He used mean look. <laughs> I ignore <laughs> it and go on training it. After about five minutes or so, EE e. was trying to evolve into espion again. I pressed the B button again, and EE e. seemed even angrier at me. I was once again in the overworld. Before I could do anything, my trainer faced EE, e. and an angry icon appeared over the shiny Eevee's head. EE e. wants to evolve into espion. Yes or no options came up. Being that I didn't want it to evolve into Espeon, I clicked no. The, no. <laughs> the, look, it's really reasonable. <laughs> look, I want to keep just Eevee or EE. -E. The angry icon appeared over EE's head again, and the small sprite jumped up and down as if it were throwing a tantrum. EE -E wants to evolve. I Another yes or no now. option came up. I clicked no again. Just give in, dude. EE e. didn't do anything this time. I opened my party and noticed all my Pokemon were now really bad eggs. Except for EE. E. I clicked on EE, e., then on Summary. EE's e. sprite had an evil-looking smirk on its face <laughs> and red eyes. I was starting to get tired of it. Alright, you know what? I'm starting to get tired of this shit. I'm starting yeah. to get tired of your shit, EE. E. Yeah, EE. E. I went to a Pokemon Center and went to the PC. Klaus booted up the PC. I clicked A on Bill's PC. Oh, Sean, Pokemon, no problem. We understand how using the fucking PC works. I selected EE. -E. He pressed down twice and then hit A. He selected EE -E and then clicked on release. EE -E won't leave without a fight. Suddenly I'm dragged into a random encounter. EE -E wants to fight. Go, Typhlosion. There were two things that I noticed so wait, here. Wait, wait, wait. This kid is now fighting his own... Resilient EE? -E? Yes. Okay. He's fighting his own Pokemon because he tried to release it and it wouldn't go. It was like, no, 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 no. You're going to evolve me. <laughs> you, know, you don't understand. I cannot do this on my own. He can only evolve to Espeon with friendship. So he's kind of like the cable guy of like Pokemon. <laughs> he's like, we're best friends. We're best friends, damn it. And I'm going to evolve into an Espeon during the daytime because we're best friends. Would you like to go to Middle Ages Dinner Theater? <laughs> There were two things I noticed here. The first thing was that I suddenly had my Typhlosion back. The second thing was that both EE's and Typhlosion sprites were bloody. Of course they were, it's a creepypasta. EE -E still had that grin on its face, and there was now blood on its eyes and ears. Would you like to play a game? <laughs> Typhlosion's sprite looked very much like it was in pain. Blood was dripping from its mouth and nose. Flesh was exposed on its forehead, and the flame on its neck looked weak. What will Typhlosion do? I clicked the fight command, then chose flamethrower. Typhlosion is scared. What? I whispered to myself. <laughs> what? <laughs> to myself. <laughs> I didn't know Pokemon would get too scared to attack. EE -E used bite. The attack dealt much damage to my Cy <laughs> Much damage to my Typhlosion. Much, s such damage. So much damage. So faint. <laughs> such much damage. But it wasn't down yet. There was more blood on it now than before. What will Typhlosion do? Fight, flamethrower. Typhlosion is scared. I sighed. Again, I whispered. EE <laughs> e used kill. Typhlosion has died. No! I yelled. <laughs> no. I was glad my dad wasn't home when I had said that. Because <laughs> then he would have been like, Quiet the fuck down! I'm trying to masturbate in here! <laughs> <laughs> when he said no, I'm glad my dad wasn't home to hear me yell no. He doesn't allow such language in our house. <laughs> We're a good Christian family. We only say yes, and we only do Jesus. We didn't need him knowing that I played Pokemon. Because, you know, Pokemon's the devil yeah, and such. It leads to homosexuality and, and all Satanism. that. Satanism. Klaus is out of usable Pokemon. Klaus fell victim to EE. E. I was once again confused. Fell victim? What did it mean by fell victim? He was just as confused as you oh, are. EE e will show you tonight, Klaus. <laughs> I was back in the overworld, but I was in what seemed to be Ilex Forest. Ilex Forest instead of the Pokemon Center. 
The forest was a dark red instead of its normal green color. Oh, that we know what that means. That can only mean bad. Right. B bones and rotting flesh were strewn across the area. The little pond was blood red, too. At this point, what is this, fucking crowing? <laughs> At this point, I was... So or not the crowing. What's the, uh... Chase. The one about Chase. The song? Or? The song about Chase. What's the song oh, about Chase? That's, uh... The, what? Uh, the, uh, I can't even... Why is, why is my whole mind blank? Cuts I, marked in the march of men. There you go. Crowing. Four people got that, and good on Cuts you guys. Cuts marked in the march of men. At this point, I was starting to feel sick to my stomach. Then I noticed something. E.E. E. was right in front of my trainer. E.E. E. Sprite jumped up and down. E.E. E. wants you to suffer. <laughs> oh, my God. No, E.E. E. No. I was getting too scared to go on with this. I moved my thumb toward the power button. Don't even try it. You're not getting away from me. A voice was came through the speakers <laughs> of my DS. <laughs> I hey, bud. I assumed the voice belonged to E.E. E. The screen turned to black, and the only sound I could hear is what sounded like slashing. When the overworld came back, I saw my trainer laying on the ground in a pool of blood. What? He, he had an arm and leg missing, is and he his playing eyes on a were DS? pitch black. All right. He's playing on a DS, right? Yeah. Okay, that's the only way. Like, I wouldn't believe a Game Boy Color would be able to do that. I presumed that his eyes were ripped out. <laughs> E.E.'s e. sprite jumped up and down again. Then a happy icon appeared over E.E.'s e. head. <laughs> I tried turning the game off again, and to my surprise, it worked this time. I thought he was going to say, and to my surprise, the game said, we will not turn off. And then he yelled, I am so surprised! I'm really glad he my whispered dad to wasn't himself. home. I sat on my couch speechless and breathed hard for a moment before turning it back on. What? I clicked on Soul Silver once I was on the DSI menu. After the title screen came up, I was immediately taken to a wild encounter. My trainer sprite was missing his eyes and an arm. How do you know your trainer sprite was missing eyes? He has his back turned to you if it's your trainer sprite. Oh man, this is this is like it's turning into the lost Pokemon Silver. <laughs> I swallowed hard. This greatly disturbed me. <laughs> <laughs> then the opposing Pokemon appeared. EE e. attacked. I noticed that EE e. I noticed that EE e. had shiny Espeon ears, tail and jewel. Blood was dripping from the ears, tail and jewel. Its eyes were red and also had blood dripping from them. Its cry was like a demonic version of Espeon's cry. Aww. The only option was ball. I clicked on it and I started balling. And it was like, yeah, you a baller. And, and they all like oh, yeah. picked him up on their shoulders and had a parade. And it sure did. I click on it. Klaus used one Pokeball. EE e. goes into the ball. It shakes once and again. Then EE e. breaks out. Should have held A. Yeah. EE e. used kill. Oh, no, I said quietly to myself. <laughs> he whispered again. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so glad my dad was not here. <laughs> there was a flash of crimson red. Oh, this was crimson red as compared to just normal red. Like or before. hot red or fire engine red. Or burgundy. Before a text box came up. E.E. E. has killed Klaus. The screen went back to the overworld. No, 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 that's not impossible. I'm sorry. That's impossible. <laughs> you're, 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 the screen couldn't go back to the overworld after you died. A Pokemon can't actually kill the player. <laughs> they are your tool. The screen went back to the overworld. My trainer sprite wasn't there. E.E. E. sprite was now grinning widely. You should have let me evolve. <laughs> Did it say that? E.E.'s e. voice echoed through the speakers of my DSi. Oh the game God. turned itself off as E.E. E. finished talking. I was too terrified to turn it back on. I threw my DS at the wall. It broke in a million pieces, and the next day it was reformed on my bed. Unfortunately, GameStop's warranty does not cover creepypasta. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's wrong with your DS? It's smashed into pieces. I was too terrified to turn it back on. I threw my DS at the wall, and surprisingly, 
Only my Soul Silver game pops out of it. Wait a minute, that's surprising because he expected a Sonic doll bleeding from the eyes to pop out of it. <laughs> I picked up the game cartridge and throw it in the trash can in the corner of my room. I sat there on my couch wondering what had just happened. I went downstairs and stole the lighter from my dad's study. I then came back upstairs. I stole some weed from my dad's study, too. <laughs> and then I lit I the game cartridge on fire and I melted it over the garbage. And then I lit my dad's weed. <laughs> I sat there on the couch wondering what had just happened. I turned on my TV and the screen was black. <laughs> I figured I had just left it on the channel I used to play on my Wii. I turned through channels before leaving it on 29. The screen remained black. I sighed and reached to press the power button. God damn creepy pastas. But before I could, an eerie voice comes through the speakers. You should have let me evolve. The TV? <laughs> TV evolve into 52 inch flat screen that's LED that'll smartness. take millions of years was that it that was it oh wow that was uh fun and kind of creepy see this is what happens Pasta. When, when you don't let creatures evolve <laughs> right when you don't let nature take its course thank you Ian Malcolm Ian it's Malcolm a, it, wrote it, this it, story it, when he was 13 it's a, it's a, it's a, let me just Push my glasses up there a little bit. So you were talking about Eevee. Oh yeah, there's I got tons one of, more. There's tons of fan art of this EE character evolved, like looking all fucked up with the blood the, and all the, that. Yeah. I think I saw that. It, it was uh, the the psychic one. It's like gray and green. It's there was weird. a psychic one I saw. It's weird. Which, what was the psychic Eevee? Espion. Espion. Yeah. No, that's dark. Oh, no, I'm thinking of, I was thinking of Umbreon the whole time. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. My bad. Noob. Again, give me, give me. This one's about Wally. Oh, cool. A creepy pasta about a beloved Pixar a character. A beloved Pixar character that just so happens to be the annoying kid from Ruby and Sapphire. I mean, the best trainer around. The experience I'm about to recount to you is quite short, unfortunately, but I remember it quite no, vividly. That's, yeah, not that's, unfortunately, that's a plus. Yeah. You got something going for you, kid. You remember Wally, right? Yeah. The cute little boy who served as your rival in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald? Yeah, he's easily one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> really? <clears throat> he doesn't seem to have any emotional hang-ups, am I right? Like my bitch girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> like my dad. <laughs> He's not arrogant. He like doesn't constantly dad. call you weak. Like my dad. <laughs> He's not a hyperactive annoyance. Dad. And he's not trying to deceive <laughs> you. Even for the smallest amount of time. That's totally my dad. My dad's always trying to deceive me. And, oddly enough, for small amounts of time. <laughs> he's just a sweet... Innocent little boy who wants to be a good Pokemon trainer. That, like, just like my dad. <laughs> right. That's so weird. <laughs> he was the one I hated to beat. That's what my dad said to me. You're the one I hate to beat, but I do it because I love you. But at the same time, I loved it. <laughs> the way This is horrible. This is horrible. Not the funny. The way he accepted his defeat at my character's hands. <sighs> ah, you... Uh... You are my number one. <laughs> With the vow to try harder, made me feel like I was a motivator of sorts, like some kind of icon to look oh up God. to. This kid's a fucking sadist. You sadistic fuck. Are you the you, one that, you, that... Did you make Law Silver? Yeah. <laughs> sadistic fuck. I wasn't okay. I wasn't beating him mercilessly. I was helping him get better. Oh, I haven't heard that one before, Dad. <laughs> and then... Quite some time since I played my Ruby game. A few years, at least. But I never once misplaced it, as I suddenly got the urge to play it one day after watching the Jirachi Wishmaker movie. I found it neatly tucked away in my sock drawer, <laughs> in the exact same corner in which I had left it, next to that other thing my parents don't know about either. It wasn't even dusty. It wasn't even <laughs> sticky. 
the cloth protection of a bun of unused socks. <laughs> These socks were unused. Kept which is why it wasn't sticky. From any damaging elements. Which in mean? turn answered the question as to why I placed it in my sock drawer in the first place. Ha! <laughs> And he actually wrote that. That wasn't Craig's elaboration. But I love that he says unused socks. He doesn't say clean socks. He doesn't say new socks. He says unused socks. Not yet used, fresh out of the package. <laughs> I leave those in there. I just keep recycling the ones that I use. They never hit the sock drawer. Moving on. <laughs> I located my DS. See, I misplaced my GBASP quite a while ago. Not that it mattered. And quick <laughs> so condescending, so passive aggressive. And quickly inserted the red cartridge, excited to see my old, completely unbalanced Pokemon team. Un really? You were that unbalanced? You're like, Psh, yeah, my shit's unbalanced. Imbalanced. <laughs> I selected my save file. I saw that I had saved right in front of the Pokemon League, which was good considering I planned to challenge them straight away anyway, huh? Am I right? Am I right? Rather. Since I was there, I figured I'd pay my favorite little rival a friendly visit before doing anything. First Wally, then the League, then I'd see if there was a chance I had been lucky enough to find my game on the day I could find Mirage Island. We all know what that's like. We all know what that means. Mirage Island is a euphemism for jerking off. Oh, I thought that was uh, just trying to find, you know, secret Pokemon. I didn't even get that one. I'm oh, sorry. As I stepped away from the league entrance, following the zigzag path downward, I stopped a moment following and opened my party. Following the zigzag path downward. That's the euphemism for masturbation. There you go. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Guys, don't bother me when I'm following the zigzag path downward. downward. <laughs> I stopped a moment and opened my party. Normally, when I leave a Pokemon game alone for a while, I find out that the last thing I did was trade to help out my Pokedex on my other games. It certainly wouldn't have been the first time that I entered battle completely unaware that I had a party full of level 5 Ratatatata and Magikarp. It's a bit of an embarrassing situation, to say the least. It's embarrassing because the NPCs are cognizant of it happening. He is this fucking loser went to the Pokemon League with level 5 it. magic card. I get it. I feel that, too. You're like, oh, fuck, because I've been there. I know exactly what he's talking about. It is right. embarrassing because you're like, oh, my God, I'm about to lose to this NPC. This is so embarrassing. No one's going to see it except, except for the for NPCs. You. you and the NPCs are the only ones that see it, but it's <laughs> embarrassing, man. They were all there, though. Inferno, the level 100 Blaziken. Volcano, the level 85 Groudon. Dyloros, the level 87 Rayquaza. Duragon, the level 65 Selamence. Harbinger, the level 55 Absol. And Vengeance, ah, the level 34 Banette. Thank you. Let's hear it for naming your Pokemon. This kid's got more respect than any of the other creepypastas just off naming his Pokemon. For real, right? This other kid's like, you named your Pokemon? What a sick joke. What kind of sick joke is this? Sick pervert. As I said, painfully unbalanced. But they were all there just as I had left them. I was relieved, actually. That meant that Ruby was the game I had and abused the pal park with. What? <laughs> <laughs> Abusing the pal park is another... That, that's mutual masturbation. <laughs> right? It must have been Emerald. <laughs> but that's not really important, though. And I'm getting off track. That's another Because I one. said this was a... Getting I, off track is another one. I'm getting off track. I said this is a short story. <laughs> Apparently it's not. My party was there, so I didn't have to waste a few minutes in going back up to the league to switch out my dinky little underlevel Pokemon for something a little better. That's another euphemism for <laughs> masturbation. Wasting a few minutes in going back up to the league to switch out my dinky little underlevel Pokemon for something a little better, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, oh. So I began my little trek to see Wally once more. <laughs> That's another one. Begin your little trek to see Wally. I'm, I just got to go <laughs> begin a little trek to see Wally once more, if you know what I mean. As I enter the cave. Enter in the cave if you're a girl or if, I mean, hey. I thought you were going to say if you're a dude finally having sex. Okay. First time. Enter in the cave is a pretty, it's a pretty, uh, lib you can use it liberally. He was standing there waiting for me already. <laughs> I couldn't remember if that was what he was supposed to do or not. As I said, it's been quite a long time since I so much as thought about this fucking game. <laughs> yeah, we're sure it is. We're sure it has. But I was excited to talk to him either way. 
whether I felt guilty for beating him or not. <laughs> I really loved seeing him. I tasted this, his tears. This whole story is just a fucking euphemism for masturbation. I approached him and pressed A to talk. <laughs> That's another one pressing A to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but rather than him say something in greeting before challenging me to a battle, the trainer oh, spotted just being rude. played for a second or two before the screen flickered, signifying a battle had started. But just as quickly as the screen faded to black, it faded back into the normal cave scene once more. Only Wally was no longer there. I shrugged it off. That's another one, shrugging it off. I'm just shrugging <laughs> it off true. in here. It's true. Oh, yeah, just let me shrug it off real quick, and I'll be out with you guys. Meet you at the bar. Shrug it's going to be a long off. shrug. <laughs> I shrugged it off, thinking that years of... That years have actually had put a little wear on my game's inner workings. <laughs> <laughs> totally, that is a totally a poorly worded euphemism for masturbation. Not that I'm actually techno savvy enough to really know how. Yeah, that he's works. like, and then he's, he's like, I put a little wear on my game's inner workings. Not that I'm actually techno savvy enough to really know. I've never I don't actually. Know, I, don't know. I don't actually play with myself. I'm uh, just. I don't know. I'm just joking. I'm just. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I started to walk away, thinking I'd try to see if the glitch continued in the Pokemon League. If it did, I was out of a game. I'd either have to reset or get a new one. <laughs> Am I right? Either option would kill me. Inferno was the best Pokemon I've ever had. <laughs> so before I could take a single step past turning around, the Pokenav rang. I didn't think it could function properly in caves and the like, since I was kind of close to the exit. And open air. I suppose it made sense for it to work. As if reception works the same in a fucking programmed video game as it does in the real world. I think this is supposed to be ring ring, ring ring, ring ring, instead of ellipses, ellipses. Yeah, because that's ellipses, what ellipses, they do in the ellipses, game. Ellipses, ellipses. It does an ellipses when it's ringing in the game. Wally, so come it's on. Wally calling, and he says, Come to Petalburg, click, end quote. I'm not entirely sure how to explain it. With a little hiccup my game just had to the battle scene and the fact and the face that I'm almost positive that small bit of dialogue wasn't scripted. It was probably supposed to be fact. Yeah. I was, why was he almost positive that it wasn't scripted? I just felt uneasy. Come to Petalburg? Come to Petalburg could have very easily been scripted by the creators of that game. Yeah, but there would be terrorists with bombs strapped to them waiting for him at Petalburg. Yeah, but he felt uneasy. You can't describe it. He was no uneasy cops. feeling. No cops. Come to Petalburg. No cops felt uneasy. Nonetheless, I got out of the cave and selected Dial Ro Dale Oros to fly to Pelleberg City. Sorry about that. When I get there, I could definitely tell something was off. The whole area looked foggy and all the colors looked as if they had been washed out, leaving the normally cheery little town looking rather dismal. Even the music was different, just slightly though. The tempo had been noticeably slowed, further adding to the incredibly dreary effect I explored the area a little, going in the few buildings surrounding the Pokemon Center just to see what else had changed. For one thing, no one was around. The area was completely devoid of all NPCs. What's up with that? What's up with that? I mean, I go to the town, I might at least expect to be greeted and be like, I like wearing shorts. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know what kind of summer wear the people of this town enjoy? Right? And do you or do you not like riding your bicycle? <laughs> but it didn't take me long to figure out where they all were. Wally's funeral. The NPCs waiting outside Wally's house. All of them from the entire game. Just all of them conjured right up at Wally's house. Craig's edition. <laughs> <laughs> Laying sweet, sweet roses for the prince who truly was, in the end, the best Pokemon trainer out there. Craig's edition. <laughs> I walked up to Wally's parents' house to find seven NPC sprites lining the path to the door. Two columns of three, with one standing to the side of the door. All of them were black. Any... Not all of them were black. <laughs> all of them Sorry. were black. All of... This is weird. There was black people there, and I, I was like, what the fuck? Like, that does not seem right. <laughs> all of them wore black. Creepy, right? <laughs> Any of my uneasy feelings only grew. 
And my it's, uneasy feelings only grew. And my you're uneasy supposed, feelings. No, you're supposed to wear black to a funeral. There's nothing weird. You shouldn't feel uneasy if you see a bunch of people at a funeral wearing black. I think they grew because he was at a funeral. I guess, a yeah. I guess, it's, I guess it like, is Like, oh natural. boy, I was so ready and happy to meet Wally and see him. And just, I cannot, shucks. I can't wait but to the talk fact to that Wally. They were and all then wearing, they're all like, Wally's dead. But I'd be creeped out if they weren't all wearing black. And be like, and they were all dressed like they are at a fucking like, fish concert. <laughs> they're in tie-dye and... Curious, I spoke to each of them. None of them seemed happy, which would make me feel a little more easy. <laughs> Nobody should seem happy at a funeral. So far, so good. This shouldn't have happened. I thought yeah. he was doing so well. This is what people say at a funeral. We thought he had beaten it. Okay, I mean... We, he had looked up this to is you. A, this is a metaphor for masturbation. So. Why couldn't you give him a break? Metaphor He'd for still vigorous be masturbation. If it wasn't for you... Oh, shit. He didn't think he, he was good enough to move further. That's your fault. That's all your fault. <clears throat> I knew what was going on now, but I didn't want to believe it. But as I walked into his house, I was forced to. A couple more NPCs died in the small room as a small black coffin rested in the middle of the area. While he was dead. He did! I spoke to the other NPCs, most only repeated, It's all your fault. But one which I believed was his mother. Explain things a little what is, better for me. What a shitty thing to say at a funeral. It's all your fault. Like, <laughs> dude, you are the one. Even if, like, the douchebag, that even if it was his fault and he showed up to the funeral, you're the one ruining the funeral if you're like, it's all your fault and shit. Like, right? you need to hold that shit in, like, and just let the grieving grieve. That's the one thing you're supposed to do at dude, a funeral. Dude, for real. And if, like, your character ever talked, he would say... Dude just called me to told me to come here. <laughs> what the fuck? What the some fuck John dies on? at the end shit. The damp cave air aggravated his condition. He strained himself to become better so he could finally be as good as you. So why don't you just this fucking is, train in the desert or some shit, not in the his, cave? This is his mother this is his mom talking explaining, to you. Explaining herself. But he pushed himself too hard. His body gave out. Again, a metaphor for masturbation. This a whole hiker thing. found him, a Pokeball clutched in his little <laughs> hand, his Pokemon refusing to leave his side. He called us using Wally's nav. Do you know what it's like? Being informed by a total stranger that someone you love is dead? By now, I felt absolutely terrible. Wouldn't you? I so, do. I do, in fact. Having to fucking trudge through this story. I didn't know the kid had cancer. So I did as I was told and walked up to the small casket. As soon as I touched it, the music stopped. The blank dialogue box popped up. It stayed there for a few seconds before a single word was slowly typed out in it. Why? A battle started. A real one this time. Rather than that <laughs> teaser I'd experienced A real earlier. one. A bunch of terrorists bursted through my front door. <laughs> This is just real. started punching me in the face. I dropped my DS and got the shit This ain't out of no myself. Pokemon training exercise. <laughs> this is real. So not a real battle, but rather a, a, another battle in the game. And one that wasn't just a teaser for him dying. My heart sank as Wally's sprite slid into the opposing trainer's spot. His skin was pale. His colors were washed out, and he looked quite sad. But what hurt the most was the opening battle announcement. Pokemon trainer Wally wants one last battle. Wouldn't you? <laughs> I just want to use your love tonight. tonight. I don't want to lose your love tonight. He sent out his first Pokemon. Yeah! His cherished Gardevoir, who also looked upset. I assumed this would be the trend with his Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> they look upset. So they, I sent out I Inferno. Like, <laughs> I like that they look upset. They don't look angry. They don't look grieved. They don't look sad. They don't look tortured. They look upset. <laughs> so I sent out my level Hundo legendary Pokemon <laughs> against it to fuck it up. Wally, <laughs> are you kidding me? You're Gardevoir. You can't be on Groudon's level. He's going to kill you every time. Sympathy urged me to throw this battle to make his last one a good one for him. But the competitor in me said, give it all I had. <laughs> Guess which one I listened to. What? I don't know. Which one did you listen to? You haven't given us much character development for yourself. So I don't know. Are you a like competitive bro or are you a compassionate human being? Or I have how no about idea. let's think of this. 
Don't you think that if the point of the game advanced forward would be to lose, you would lose no matter how much you gave it? So, win and be done with it, or else you're just going to have to replay the battle. Ah, uh, that's kind of lame, though, in RPGs when you are meant to try and then just you're just meant to lose the lose. battle. Like, there's no way to win the battle, and you're meant to sit there and ex... ex you, like, get so frustrated. Yeah, like, and then you just Like, fuck, die. I'm gonna have to fucking restart this shit? Cheap as fuck. It's the real creepy pasta. Inferno plowed through each and every one of the saddest Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking them flat with one attack each. As the battle ended, Wally slid back into the frame. His sprite, now mostly transparent, and said, Why can't you let me win? <laughs> Because you're weak, kid! <laughs> you're fucking weak! You dead! When the battle screen faded, Wally's mother approached my character and pushed him back <laughs> and away from the coffin. Well, you Get totally out. trashed his funeral. You're, you're done here. You're clearly having a psychotic episode. And, you disgust me. And just showed up at his funeral and beat the shit out of his corpse. And his Pokemon. And all the Pokemon that all were there sad, grieving. Yeah. Pokemon. He's just like, Earthquake! <laughs> Groudon uses Earthquake. And it was double in poor taste because this was, this was just days after the Earthquake in Japan. Right, right. Wally's mother approached my character and pushed him back and away from the coffin. Get out of here. You're done here. You disgust me. <laughs> <laughs> and she shoved me out the door. Instead of appearing outside the house, the screen cut to white and began rolling credits as the names of those involved in the production of the game faded <laughs> in and out. But white was replaced by an ending scene. Poor Wally's funeral procession. NPC sprites slowly paraded through Petalburg, the tiny casket at the center of the crowd. My eyes watered <laughs> as they slowly left through right exit of the city. And Jesus wept! <laughs> the camera followed as they stopped at the small patch of grass where Wally had caught his dear Ralts. When they stopped, they all turned to face the screen just for a second but I could almost feel the judgment as <laughs> they turned back to the casket, making me feel super bad for myself. The screen faded to white, and Wally's trainer sprite faded in. Beneath it were three little words. Wait, let me guess. You sadistic <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you complete me. <laughs> <laughs> or you sadistic fuck. Basically, it just said, in Suck loving memory. my dick. Oh, it said, in loving memory. Yeah, because I guess Wally's really dead or something. <laughs> it would have been oh, better if it was like, you sadistic fuck. Or if it just said, let me win. <laughs> let me win. I like shorts. Or I'm going to tell mom. <laughs> this, that's does more like shorts. Words. This is, if it was Joey, if it was the story of Joey, it would My be. My ratatatata <laughs> is in the top 5%. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Wait, no. Joey was the one that likes shorts, right? Is that Youngster or is Joey? That someone else? I think Joey's the one that likes shorts. Joey's the one that likes the Ratata time. I know that. Oh. All right. We got he one, also like shorts. One last I mean, creep. Who doesn't, right? <laughs> They're so I comfortable. I don't like shorts. I love wearing me some shorts. I never wear, I don't own any shorts. Nah, uh, short, shorts. I'm such a Kevin I own Smith boxer in this shorts. I don't own. Shorts, shorts. Like, like, I don't own shorts. I mean, <laughs> who doesn't or short, wear shorts. short shorts? Nathan doesn't. All right, so we've got one last creepy pasta for you. This one's called 7:06 p.m. Almost don't want this to end. This is kind of fun. Yeah, we can definitely do more of them. There's enough creepy pasta for an entire podcast series. I'm of sure. Just regular creepy pasta. Maybe not just Pokemon creepy pasta. All right, so. The final Pokemon Creepypasta for the evening, 7.06 p.m. I got into Pokemon Creepypasta about a month ago. Seeing a copy pasta of Easter Egg Snow on Mount Silver, that's a, another Pokemon Creepypasta, I think. This is going to be a meta pasta, isn't it? What do you mean? It's going to be like so self-aware that Creepypastas exist, <laughs> and it's a Creepypasta itself. It's a Creepypasta about Creepypasta. Can we just say it's going to abet it? <laughs> Um, so about that creepypasta he mentioned, Easter egg slash snow on Mount Silver, he says, I recommend it, by the way. It gave me nightmares. <laughs> I read all the popular ones, Lost Silver, Come Follow Me, etc. And even though I usually hate scary stuff, 
I can relate to Pokemon and believe that since Pokemon aren't real, then the awful stuff described in the stories can't be real either. This thought comforted me throughout all the awesome stuff I read on both TR and this very website. Wait, TR, what, from suburbia oh shit oh <laughs> shit throwback he heard go check out fair enough he heard the punk rock kids from suburbia TR. telling him these stories they were like bro and then it was missing no killing his mother <laughs> um of Hands course just came down and killed characters of course this all soon changed starting about last week but first a little bit of boring background oh god oh, damn, damn it. it we were like oh Great, the boring background's over. And he's like, but now a little bit of boring. Oh, shit. I own only three Pokemon games, Diamond, Platinum, and Soul Silver. Yeah, All of them yeah, were big bought up. new. Want to fight about it? Yeah, I only own not, two. We, let's not sit here and talk about it. Let's get through this as fast as we can, as boring background. All of them were bought new, not used from some old toothless guy at a creepy yard sale for $1 with the sticker deformed and scratched on and stuff. Just ordinary games that couldn't possibly be malicious in any way. This is what we call filler. <laughs> Don't worry, these ones weren't bought for a dollar off a crazy toothless homeless guy at a yard sale. I'll buy that for a dollar. I am a competitive fag, and I... Whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Not dude. cool, dude. They choose to be called little people. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Wrong? And have an EV-trained and IV-bred team. Not perfect in any way, but I spent days in total raising this team and have grown quite close to my beloved Pixels. And I'm pretty fucking competitive in top six in the world. But now I have taken up the arduous task of grinding to level 100 on Platinum. About a week ago, I was watching TV in my room and grinding on the Elite Four when all of a sudden the game froze. Well, there goes a good hour of unsaved work. Psh. I looked at the clock, anticipating the arrival of some new episode of a show, I forget which, at 7 o'clock. And then he thought, maybe I should have been saving frequently. Bullshit, why would he forget what show? The yeah, clock, right? The clock, <laughs> read se the clock read 7.06. Was it Pushing Daisies? Right, not that many shows premiere at 7. I'm, uh, how right? much TV was do you watch? Was it Simpsons or was it Wheel of Fortune? Since I missed it, I just catch that episode later and try to regain my hour's work. When it replays at 11, so it's definitely South Park. No. The game WB. <laughs> the game started up and played fine, right at the entrance to the Elite Four where I saved last. Nothing was out of the ordinary, and after having all the Pokemon I could take, went and did other stuff that is irrelevant to the story at hand. What other stuff did you do? <laughs> the next day, more Pokemon Platinum and a little bit of online chat room action. What the fuck? 4chan. What makes this even creepier is the parentheses that say, or lack thereof. So he was in chat roulette. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> lack thereof chat. Too much dick. <laughs> and once again, the game froze. This time I managed to save just five minutes before this happened. Now paranoid of a game freeze destroying hours of effort, I went to pick up my glass of water on the nightstand next to my bed and happened to catch of the glance at the clock directly next to it. 7.06 p.m. Whoa, he said the thing. He said the <laughs> name of the story. The title, oh my God, I got goosebumps. Now I can rest at night. Goodbye. It's done. It's over. Some type of suicide squad. <laughs> Every day at precisely 7.06 p.m., the game would freeze. This happened for a while, up until yesterday when I happened to be on here reading some tales of horror. Another game freeze, another explicitive, another restart. I, maybe he meant expletive? However, yeah, expletive deleted. <laughs> However, this is where it gets weird and apparently cliche. Apparently, from what I hear, I don't know. The game booted up like always. Giratina's familiar cry that I was tired of hearing was ringing, and I selected my save file, not hesitating to return to yet another run through the E4, the Elite 4, not like E3 right. to the next level. To the next level, to the 10th degree. Instead, the Mount Silver map came up, blurred and much more than I remember it. And it said, you sadistic fuck. <laughs> my trainer also looked weird, and my team wasn't there, replaced with a group of level 100s. The three Johto starters, Tyranitar, Pidgeot, and Lugia. Exactly how Easter Egg Snow Mountain... 
oh, exactly how the creepypasta Easter egg slash snow on Mount Silver starts. I played through, and to my surprise and utter terror, the game played out exactly like the hack slash glitch slash Easter egg slash Easter egg did in the story. The game soft reset itself, Giratina once again issuing its cry, and me trying to boot up my save file. Once again, it didn't happen. Maybe we should have talked about Snow on Mount Silver before this one. Maybe just a little bit. I found myself at the beginning of Lost Silver. We talked about that one. And once again, had to play through that. Every time the game would soft reset, a new creepypasta story would show up. What? It's a creepypasta about creepypastas? In place of my save file. So it's like the Goosebumps movie of creepypastas. Oh my god. I can't believe that the Goosebumps movie just ripped off this creepypasta. A new creepypasta story I read would show up in place of my save file in the exact same order as I had read them. Oh, what? <laughs> no way! All even you more got gruesome. You multiple save files? All even more gruesome in person than just as a story. Oh, okay. It was all even more gruesome actually experiencing it himself than it was reading it on the internet. No way. Uh, you don't say. Yeah, no, this actually happened to you, so it was creepier than reading about it happening to somebody that you don't know that's fictitious. That has a very loose grip on grammar, to say the least. You kidding me? You kidding me? My hope that these were all just figments of imagination of imagination was now shattered time and time again as I struggled to finish all the hacks with my sanity intact. <laughs> Finally, as I recognized and finished the most recent story, which was the one I was reading at the time of the freeze, I wanted to get back to normality. Not gonna happen. You of fucked, course. Kid. You fucked. That's you live in not the how it went. Life. You gotta finish the Jumanji game. The game soft reset for the umpteenth time. That's my favorite teen, the umpteenth time. How about you just stop playing? And I had such a wonderful feeling that it was all over, to the point where I almost missed the fact that Giratina's Cry did not play. But don't worry, he didn't miss it. Because uh, he's here to tell us about it. Right? Utter silence, not even the sound of the game file being selected. A blank screen awaited me, and stayed there for almost five minutes. Huh. <laughs> you sat there looking at the screen for five fucking minutes. Right? I almost turned it off when my overworld trainer sprite popped up, looking as normal as it could be. A text box appeared. Is this a joke? Just some kind of cheap entertainment? Is that what he said? He said that out loud. <laughs> wow. He said that out loud. Okay. He's like looking up at the ceiling at nothing. Is this just a joke to you, God? Just your type of cheap entertainment? My lord and father who are in heaven? You gonna try to take the gaming away from Daryl? And me, and Coral, and Ellipses. King Ellipses. Throughout all the terrible things I just witnessed, this was the most bone-chilling. A simple text box. Do you know what I have suffered because of your little fantasy tales? No, I do not. I have been killed, dismembered, frozen, starved, and tortured more times than I can count. So in other words... I was frozen today. Oh, shit. I read about somebody that was. So much pain. I just began to grasp his meaning. All those stories, all those little creepy fantasies were actually harming my character. Emo kids, life is pain. <laughs> you have not the slightest idea what I went through. All I want now is to exact my vengeance, and I know just where to begin. Remember the highly trained team I mentioned earlier? It consists of Infernape, Gliscor, Alakazam, Blissey, Skarmory, and Roserade. I don't remember you mentioning that. As he finished um. saying this ominous line, the forward sprite of Infernape popped up, replacing that of the trainer. See him, your prized Pokemon? How hard and lovingly you work to raise him from hatchling into the true terror of battle he is now? Oh, shit. Shame if something were to happen. I cringed at this, and soon after, another text box appeared, stating that my trainer brandished a knife. Trainer used knife. The battle animations for cut and slash played over and over. Oh, shit, motherfucker, shank! Differing in size and direction, and colored a sickening red instead of the normal silverish gray. And it was in the real world. <laughs> it was happening to me. All the while, Infernape's cry played, variously distorted from high-pitched screams to the low moans that threatened to break the speakers of my DS. 
Oh, and the bowels of my soul. The volume played at a constant level regardless of where the volume slider was placed, even in the off position. The screen flashed white as one giant slash rent the poor Infernape from one corner of the screen to the other, which I presumed to be the death blow. His scream played long and louder than all the rest. Long and hard. (laughs) Isn't this fun? Ha! It's hilarious. Hee hee, who's next? Gliscor, my favorite of the team, popped up next. The same terrible thing happened to the rest of the team. It seemed like the higher their HP stat, the more time it took to kill them. Blissey especially took an agonizingly long time to finish off, just like this fucking creepypasta. Right? That's unfortunately short. (laughs) And all the while, I could do nothing but sit and watch. The power button failed to work, only increasing the volume of the cries of pain. Once Roserade fell, the trainer spite had reappeared, visibly bloody with a long knife in its right hand. You see? You took away all my life, my happiness. You know how many times, in addition to my own death, I had to watch my Pokemon helplessly as they perish? Do you? After this, a long pause ensued. After a minute, this popped up. The anime got dark. By the way, check the clock. There were ellipses in there. 706? I looked at the clock. It still read 706. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 but no soft reset. Unchanged, regardless of the good hour or two I spent in this nightmare. This is like that fucking John Cusack movie, 1406. 1408. Only as half as much. It's 706. 1408. Oh, whatever. Sorry. It's, it's fun at 1406, I guess. The digital replay started to flicker, and to my astonishment, read 6 colon six six. Now I knew seven colon oh six is six minutes after six sixty, which then makes six 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 what seven oh six. What? Six oh, six 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 because oh, six my. minutes past the hour. Shut the so fuck up. Seven oh six is six six. Are you six. fucking kidding me? This <laughs> you, fu- you fucking brick. No, no, fuck you, kid. Are you shitting me? This is not the witching hour. This realization only lasted a moment before more screaming issued from my DS and I whipped my vision back to the screen. (laughs) The trainer sprite... That's another uh, masturbation euphemism, whipping your vision back to the screen. The trainer sprite was being slashed and cut just like the Pokemon, which was most likely suicide, screaming all the while. (laughs) Why is it most likely (laughs) suicide? I just wanted to throw that in there just so you know. (laughs) All the lights in my house started to flicker on and off as the vile scream of the insane trainer grew louder and louder. The power went completely out, plunging plunging me into darkness, my original fear of the dark compiling with all this nonsense to make me almost die of a heart attack. So, in real life, he was in darkness? The game shut off right when the lights went out. Not a soft reset like the other times. The power came on in a few moments, and I slowly peeked at the clock. It read 12 o'clock in blinking lights, just like the default setting. Right, but it didn't say 666 or 706. Everything was in place and working fine. The TV and clock were normal after being set, and the lights remained in static luminosity. That's not a fucking... Normality finally returned. (laughs) It went against all my better judgment. But to truly feel secure, I just had to boot up the DS. Why? Why? Just go to bed like I want to. Do like the last kid and smash it in pieces and try to return it to GameStop. It booted fine and placed me in my original save file. Great, but what about my team? I opened my party after a minute of mental preparation. They were all there, but everyone was fainted. I left the party menu and I whited out rushing myself to the Pokemon Center instead of the Elite Four building. What the nurse said was a little troubling, though. Wow, it seems like these poor Pokemon have... Wait. Wow, it seems like these poor Pokemon has some grievous injuries. It looks like they picked a fight with a gang of Scyther. Try and be more careful next time. I checked to make sure they were healed, and everything was in place. Move sets, stats, levels, HP, everything was just as before. Just the way I left it. It just felt like a whole different game. After this, I moved my whole team over to Soul Silver, settling my paranoia about the vengeful trainer coming back for more revenge. <laughs> this was to my dismay, as the E4, the Elite Four in Soul Silver, is much weaker than that of Platinum, so I'll have an even harder time gaining levels. Anyway, Platinum is now back in its case, stored away where it will most likely be forever all important. 
Pokemon. I don't fucking know. You know what? It's over. The, the thing's over. The thing is he, over. It's creepy. You're never going to fucking play it again. Oh my god. Creepy pasta. This was both an awesome episode and a horrible episode. I never want to do this again, and yet I think we should do this we again. We should totally do this again. <laughs> creepy pasta. Man, you know what? I, the. These were unfortunately short, so I don't even have patience to plug. Like, for real, listen to the podcast. Check out our Facebook and all that, and if you want to know where it is, just listen to another episode. I don't have the time, dude. And Nathan, I, seriously. I'm tired. I got to go to bed. Seriously, dude. Thank you so much for having me on for this. This was fun. It was. It was it fun. It was fun. Thank you for coming. For another creepy pasta. Go listen to Fairpoint. Go listen to Fair Enough and more Sylph Radio coming soon. From the Secret Room, I'm Nathan K. And I'm Craig Lewis. I'm not King Ellipses, Lewis. Talk to you next time. You should have let me evolve.